conclude by telling you all about a short story. Uh, and I love telling this story because I think it illustrates the kind of people who live in Tennessee and the kind of people I know I'm with here tonight. I was over in Oak Ridge several weeks ago, early in the campaign, and I was supposed to speak to a breakfast group right at 7.30. And some of y'all may know I like to run, so I got up before daylight and I headed out on my run. I started back, it was still dark, and I, frankly, I missed the turn to my hotel. And so I started retracing my steps, and I was coming back, and I saw this office building off to the side. One light was on in there, and I went in there, and I found this gentleman sitting behind his desk. And I went up to him, and I said, can you tell me how far it is to my hotel? And he got out a map of Oak Ridge, and he said, yeah, you're here, and your hotel's over here. Uh, the hotel might as well have been in Macon County or Red Bull and Springs for my chances of getting back there. And so, you know, I'm from a rural area, so I just looked at him and I said, is there any chance you would run me back over to my hotel? <laughs> and he, uh, he looked at me kind of hard for a minute, and he said, well, yeah, I guess I can. So he got up, he locked his door, he threw me in the back of his pickup truck. you got to remember, I've been running for an hour. And, uh, <laughs> And we ride out to my hotel. He got me there, and I got out of the truck, and I said, thank you. I've been unbelievably kind. I, I can't express my gratitude enough. But gosh, I'm a total stranger. I can't believe you just did this. And I promise you, I get a tingle every time I tell this story. He looked at me, and he said, oh, son, this is Tennessee. It's what neighbors do. <laughs> because of his kindness, I made my breakfast. And I promise you, looking much more properly attired by his office. I sure hadn't told him I was running for governor. I wanted to be a little, I wanted to look a whole lot better when I got there. And so he's a geologist and he'd gone out in the field. And so I missed him. He will be the first person I visit on my next trip to Oak Ridge, which will be in about 10 days. And I, 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 I want to say, you know, we were riding over there. I never discuss politics with him. I don't know if he's a Democrat or <coughs> what his thoughts are. But I know this instinctively about that gentleman. He wants his next governor to be someone who is honest. He wants his next governor to be someone who is competent to the task. And he wants his next governor to be, to be somebody who will always be truthful with him, whether it is good or bad. Ladies and gentlemen, if I get you this <coughs> That's what I'm going to provide. And I appreciate y'all being here tonight very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. some people might disagree with that, frankly, that he 
he's had to make some tough choices. But overall, he has helped get fraud out of that system that built up under his predecessor. And I think he's done a good job of administering it. And I, and I, and I will work with that. Well, I've spent 50 years in the healthcare industry. And I can tell you that if we don't have a public policy option, we're not going to improve our healthcare. We're not going to have any reform. And I know it's going to be a cost item. But I, can you put a cost on life? No, you can't. And when my father introduced the Tent Care program, it would, it, truly it was a... Uh, Excellent it, 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 um, And he's very proud of it. But um, it's a program you've got to administer. And it was administered well in its early stages. And, you know, I know I'm talking to a part of the crowd, but we all know what happened over the next few years. And, and you know, Governor Bremson has really had to struggle to get control of that. And it's taken him several years. And I know a lot of people have been dissatisfied. But overall, he's done a fine job of administering that program. A lot of people have talked badly about the Ten Care program, but the Ten Care program did more for the children in this state than anybody has any idea. The preventive health services that were put in place because of Ten Care and these children were given preventive health, their parents learned how to, to implement prevention in their lives. You know, it, it has made a tremendous difference. I, I can tell you from personal experience. Well, thank you. I as an old nurse. I appreciate you saying that. And Please you, know, you know, there there were two components of it. It was a cost saving measure and it, and the future of it was it was a preventative measure. It was designed to help present prevent illness mm -hmm. and by giving early health care and adequate health care. Well, the and children in Macon County certainly yeah. they're adult, many of them are adults. And you know, what we fail to consider here is the illnesses that it helped prevent are costs that we did not have to bear. So it, it, it has, the program has worked very well. Tennessee has been really very much on the forefront of that. Obviously, that is a legacy that I certainly will always have a huge interest in. And I didn't mean to discount my father's influence there, but, you know, because Governor Bredesen talked to my father at length about uh, those programs. But I, I guess I'm fortunate to have both of those people as some advisors in that. And I, truly, when we do see what comes out of Washington, I will have a platform, a, a, an in-depth platform. I will invite you to look at my website and see exactly where we're headed with that. Yeah, David? What, uh, what motivated you to, to decide to run for governor? You weren't listening at the start, David. You know, you know, I, know. I, know. I, I will try to skip it today. David, really and truly, and I sincerely mean this, I've got an 18-year-old and a 16-year-old. I want them to be able to live in this state where they can find a good living wage and have good, adequate, affordable health care and be able to raise families of their own. I think it's important who the next leader of this state is. Again, I know I'm talking to a partisan crowd, but I saw what this state did under my father, and I saw how it would rest under Governor Sunderland. I think you've got to have a businessman, somebody with those kind of skills to run this state. And I started looking at the field, and I knew nothing about anybody on either side, but I felt like I had better credentials to serve this state. And it was at a time in my life when my kids were going off to college, and I, and I excuse me for using this term, I felt a calling to enter into public service. I, I, had a lot of chances to do a lot of different things, but I felt like this is what I was supposed to do. And that's from my heart.